First stop this morning is 7-Eleven for a coffee because I was very slow getting ready this morning so we had no breakfast. We ended up just running out the door the minute we were ready and it's about an hour to Yokohama and I really need a coffee to wake up. Also, 7-Eleven lattes are so good. Their rice lattes are just oh, delicious. Look, it's Sky Tree in the background. Wait, is that the Gundam? Yeah. It's, it's too big. The Gundam factory in Yokohama was closing, so this was our last chance to say goodbye to the giant moving Gundam. There is still a giant Gundam in Odaiba, but unlike this one, the Gundam in Odaiba does not move. This place was actually supposed to shut, but they've extended the closures until the end of March, which is why we wanted to come here today to see it, because I feel like this is one of the last chances that we can see the big moving Gundam. It actually took a really big team of experts to build such a big moving Gundam. So it was a huge accomplishment for them. And I don't really understand why this is a limited time thing. I feel like this should be in Yokohama forever, but maybe they'll replace it with something else. Yeah, Metal Gear Rex. Used to be there. <laughs> with lots of geckos going around. There is another show in about five minutes. So this time around, we're gonna try and go up here to get a different viewpoint. John's just mentioned that the Gundam is a bit slow, but yeah, it is slow. I think maybe all very the edits slow. on TikTok make him look super, super fast, but no, the Gundam moves very slow. I think that's the best they could do, given the size I mean, it took five minutes robot. for it to close the tent. Yeah, it did. It took a really long time for the Gundam to move his head or get down on one knee or close its hand but i still think it's so impressive and i like how the darker it gets outside the more you see the lights and the more you see the steam as well i feel like it's a completely different show in the evening than it is nighttime would be better that's what a lot of people have said that nighttime show was like really impressive you'd have the skyline the yokohama skyline looks so beautiful <laughs> So we decided to stay for the evening show and it was so good. It was completely different from the daytime show because you could really see the steam and you could see all the colors and the music. It was like a proper performance. Really, really cool. And then we went to the Gundam Lab, which tells you more about how they made the Gundam move. And it's quite incredible because it took nine companies to make this Gundam move, to create this Gundam. And of course we popped into the Gundam shop and we bought some stuff because like i said this place is closing so i feel like realistically this is the last time that we have a chance to visit it and buy some souvenirs for ourselves john is insisting on a um, a gundam gacha they're 500 yen not cheap <laughs> so you better get a good one i got a white one i think i got that one. Uh -huh. yes did you get the white one? Oh, nice! Shield. Nice! You can put it together tonight. Yeah, I'll put all of them together tonight. <laughs> we spent so long inside, it's dark out. But it's good because we got to see the show in the daytime and in the nighttime. Yeah. And it we, does yeah, look different. Perfect, yeah. yeah, we did. Now we're gonna walk around Chinatown. It is exceptionally busy today, as expected. There are so many places to eat here. There's so much street food. You can get steamed buns, you can get sweets. 
I just got a vegetable bun and the way I opened it, the eye fell off. It's very sad. Oh, inside there's like cabbage and mushrooms, sesame seeds. It smells very vegetarian. It's a bit sour, like um, pickled cabbage with a bit of spice and sesame. We have arrived at Shin Yokohama station. We've only got about one hour and a half, but we're gonna try and get dinner at the Shin Yokohama Ramen Museum. So this is a little bit like Kawasaki Warehouse, but for late 1950s Japan. Shin Yokohama Ramen Museum is a place where you can learn about the history of ramen and sample many different types of ramen from various regions of Japan, all under one roof. The museum itself is quite small. I would say that the main attraction is the immersive replica of 1959 Japanese streets. The reason it's this year in particular is because this is the year that the world's first instant ramen was invented. This area is really cool and immersive, so definitely take some time to explore all the details before sampling some ramen. Keep in mind that the price of the admission to the building is separate to any ramen you might choose to purchase. Also, some of the ramen restaurants in the museum offer veggie ramen options, but they do run out, so don't arrive too late in the day. John and I have handed in our tickets and we are just waiting to be led into the ramen shop. I got the veggie miso ramen and John got the spicy regular miso ramen. We just got here in time because it was about to close and we were, we're literally the last customers. It's shut now. I'm so relieved because the other place have run out of veggie ramen but this one still had some. So I'm getting ramen today. I cannot believe my luck that this place had vegetarian ramen. That is a spicy red miso on top. Look how thick these noodles are. This is one of the selling points of this place, the thickness of the noodles. Look how thick they are. Very filling. Because of this, I feel like maybe I should have got on a smaller portion because this is a really big portion, but it's also really delicious. <laughs> Strawberries and toilet paper. Truffle and sea salt crisps. A different brand of truffle. Then we've got black truffle peanuts. And then we've got truffle potato stick yep. sticks and truffle crisps, truffle oils, truffle sprays, truffle, everything's truffle. Yeah. But then we look over here. Chocolate truffles. Like did they think it's the same thing? <laughs> Resort Line Station because we're heading to Tokyo Disney Sea. Everything is Mickey Mouse shaped. By the way, this resort line, this little sky tram comes around every three minutes. Tokyo Disney Sea is part of the Disney Resort, but unlike other Disney parks, it's actually owned by the Oriental Land Company under a licensing agreement with Disney. Whereas Tokyo Disneyland resembles the original Disneyland in California, Tokyo Disney Sea has a predominantly nautical theme and is said to be more appealing to adults. No. No. <laughs> Look at it. We've picked our ears. Look. <laughs> You look so cool. <laughs> it's actually very normal in Disneyland or Disney Sea in Tokyo for couples to match their ears and also their outfits. So if you come here with your partner, don't cringe, just go along with it. The Disney app is amazing. It tells you where everything is. You can book shows through here. You can book places through here. We just had our Disneyland, no, I keep saying Disneyland. We just had our Tokyo Disney Sea breakfast, which was a melon pan from Mama Biscotti's. You're like Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> Our first stop is 20,000 leagues under the sea. Tokyo Disney Sea is the only place you'll be able to experience unique rides like 20,000 leagues under the sea and journey to the center of the earth. We went on both, 
Although I was extremely nervous about going on journey to the center of the earth as it looked pretty menacing. We just went on journey to the center of the earth and I freaked myself out before that ride. But the actual ride is fine. I heard people say that it's more thrilling than Splash Mountain. I thought it was a much more comfortable ride than Splash Mountain. I felt like my back was supported and I was comfortable sitting and it was fun and the drop felt really pleasant. Like it was exhilarating but it was pleasant. Whereas in Splash Mountain it was almost like uncomfortable. So if you're watching all the people go down the drop and scream and be terrified and you're scared of going on that ride then just go on it because it's not as scary as it seems I promise you <laughs> by far the tastiest thing I've had today was the tiramisu ice cream sandwich Curry is served with rice and naan. Ooh. We just popped into Casper's food court and we got some vegetarian curries. And I'm very surprised to see a fast food vegetarian option because even in Disneyland, I couldn't really find one. And there were no savory options this morning in Mama's Biscotti Bakery. So I'm very happy to have a vegetarian option that is savory. Look, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. We don't have to make a booking or anything or go to a proper restaurant. This is so easy. It smells really good. John is insisting that this tastes like Coco's curry, so I will be the judge of that. If it does, I'm not going to complain because I really like Coco's curry. A bit sweeter. Yeah, it's like a mild Coco's curry, right? I actually think this is like typical Japanese curry. So this isn't Indian curry. You will get Japanese curry, but I'm just happy to have an option. After getting a curry from Caspar Food Court, we decided to explore the Mermaid Lagoon. This area is a lot more vibrant than other parts of Disney Sea, and to me it feels the closest to the traditional Disney theme that comes to mind when you think of smaller parks. The theme of Mermaid Lagoon is supposed to make you feel like you are in an underwater kingdom, which is really cute. Oh, it's you! You're moving to make it spin faster! I'm a dizzy now. Yeah, me too. I think how I feel. <laughs> I really like these. Look at this taiyaki plate. Yeah. That is so cute. We've just sat down to watch the big band beat and we applied for tickets through the app. The app is super convenient, it's called Disney Resort and through the app you can pretty much apply for any show or experience. It's a very quick and easy way to get tickets. So my parents and I were actually in Florida when Soaring first came out and it was nothing like this. It had no theme, it was basically a white room. So this is completely different. This is set in a museum and the thematics of it are completely different. Soaring was by far my favorite ride in Disney Sea, but I may be biased because it brings up really great memories for me of my family vacation in Florida from when I was younger. Although the ride itself is the same as the US attraction, the pre-flight has an aviation storyline and theme that are unique to Disney Sea. It is definitely worth staying for the evening shows and parades, as I was absolutely amazed by their scale and production value. Everything from the music to the fireworks was incredible. We stayed right up until closing time and then made our way back home. <laughs> it's the greatest thing I've ever bought. Oh my gosh, that's adorable.